So um, this is a, like Isaac was saying, this is an introductory word. It's an opening word, meaning that I don't intend it to be um, a message. This is not the main speaking. You all sharing is the main speaking. This is just to open things up. Um, and so we have this, right? I hope many of us have this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take notes on this if you have. If you ran out of space in your during your week because you took so many notes, it's okay. That's that, that's that much better. Um, so I want to start out with um, well, the title of this week is um, organic salvation or two aspects of salvation. One is judicial redemption, lovers organic salvation. Um, now I want to start out with this question. Okay. Who is the most, no, the question is this. <laughs> um, am I the most important person in the universe? No. no. <laughs> that, that's a good answer. No, this, is a, this is a real genuine question we should ask ourselves every time we read the Bible. Right. Am I the most important person in the universe? Mm -hmm. Because if you read through the Bible, the Bible doesn't talk that much about our welfare. Because if we read through the Bible with this kind of... Um, we don't realize that we're not the most important person in the universe. We're looking for our welfare, or we're looking for this, or we're looking for that. We miss the point of a Bible. The majority of a Bible is talking about the most important person in the universe. What he wants and how he gets it. Who's the most important person in the universe? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the most important person in the universe. And what does he want? How does he get what he wants? These are big questions, and they're fully answered in here. That's what we want to start out with. Um, and so the majority of um, what um, God wants and how does he get what he wants can be covered in these two, two, um, two um, parts of two aspects of our salvation. The first part is judicial redemption. The second part is organic salvation. These are terminologies termed by um, someone in the past, maybe like 1800s or something. I can't remember, but um, these are very good words. Judicial means related to the law and redemption, and the organic re means related to life. Okay, related to the law and related to life. Now, um, what does God want, and how does he get what he wants? What does God want? Um, to illustrate this uh, first question, okay, um, let's, let's ask this question. Okay, Adam and Eve, they're sinless perfection. Are we more advanced, or not more advanced, further along towards what God wants than they are? Are we more advanced compared to them in their sinless perfection? To follow that up, um, ask this question. Um, do Adam and Eve, um, in their sinless perfection, do they have God inside of them or not? Do they have God inside of them or not? We have to say no, they did not. They didn't eat of a tree of life. But we today, despite our condition, despite um, where, where, where we are as fallen human beings redeemed, um, we have God inside of us. Mm. That is a big step. And that, that kind of illustrates um, the purpose of God. What God wants to do is he wants to get inside of us, to be our life, to be our everything. I like the chorus in the song, um, or one of the lines of the song that says, uh, I would thy living image be, yeah. and word and conduct you. And the living image comes from God living inside of us and being expressed through us and being represented through us. So this is, a, in a brief way, we're going to talk, this is touching what does God want? What does God want? And so when we have this in view, the Bible begins to make sense to us. Everything that's talked about and all the steps he's taken begins to make sense to us. Okay. By the way, can you all hear me? I know I speak soft sometimes. Okay. Um, the second thing we want to explore is how. How does God get what he wants? And this is, we're hitting the meat of the Bible at this point. And um, this, this has everything to do with us, um, our practical experience. So the first part, as I alluded to before, is judicial redemption. Judicial. Um, we, we know um, now we're complicated, in a complicated situation because we're not in the time of Adam and Eve and their sin is perfection. Before that, all they had to do was eat the tree of life. And, um, and then God's purpose can be fulfilled. At our, in our times, 
we, a problem came in, and that's sin. Um, sin, ended, sin entered into man, and God, in his righteousness, um, he can't, he's limited because of his righteousness. So that means that um, <laughs> if I were to, inv- if I'm God and I want to involve myself in there and I want to come into him, I can't. Because um, <laughs> both what he does and who he is is um, tainted by <laughs> Um, something that doesn't match me, that's against my nature. And even though I love Aaron, can't do, I can't do that much. Um, so he has to do something to solve this problem on the outward side related to his law, to his righteousness, the way he does things. And that, that thing is a judicial redemption. And you look at all five aspects, well, there's more aspects, but five aspects brought out in here, um, the washing of our sins, the cleansing away of our sins, forgiveness of our sins, um, justification, uh, reconciliation, um, and positional sanctification. All these matters relate to God clearing away outwardly um, through Christ and what he did on the cross to um, take away this uh, barrier outwardly. So now um, in Christ, I can, (laughs) God can meet with Aaron. God can get involved. God can come into it. Okay, that's the first part. And we should never neglect this part. This part is the base from which everything else comes out. But now, imagine um, you just have heaven. Or sorry, you just have Aaron. And he's, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I get it mixed up. Yeah, I just have Aaron. And um, I, pretend I'm God. I'm just with Aaron. And Aaron, though he's in, in Christ, he's forgiven and he's cleansed. Um, do I want to spend eternity with Aaron? <laughs> okay, the better way to ask this question is, um, is this, okay, you know, um, in the news, you, you, you hear things, uh, people do evil, um, horrible things to one another. Maybe you know people who, or heard of people who've done these things. Um, now, to ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, are we better than them? Are we better than them? Are we just like, are we better? Can we, are we capable of doing the same things as them? Mm. Yeah. We are. This is, every human being has this fallen flesh, um, this fallen nature inside of them. And um, on the one hand, outwardly, we're cleansed and forgiven as Christians who receive the Lord Jesus. But on the other hand, um, we're still capable of doing all these things. So this illustrates that we need um, the kind of salvation that's mentioned in Romans 5.10. Um, if you have a in your packet, um, on day two, uh, maybe we can read it together, those who have it. Uh, Romans 5.10. We can start. For if we, being enemies, were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more we will be saved in his life, having been reconciled. Much more will be saved in his life. And this, this opens up the second part of God's, or second aspect of God's complete salvation, which is organic um, salvation. And that saves us from the inside out. So here we have a diagram of man. This is who man is according to the Bible. Three parts. Yeah, I hope you guys can see it. Um, the first part is um, our spirit, second part is our soul, and the third part is our body. So what does God want to do with this fallen man <laughs> who's, um, who in all three parts um, is, needs salvation? So firstly, he touches from the inside, the innermost part of our being, which is our spirit. And he comes in um, at the time we believed into the Lord and um, received him as our savior. He comes into our spirit and he, he gets his life into that, that part. So that's initial. In day three, um, you have all these definitions, right? Um, this is the first one. This is where everything begins. And if we, we don't have this, we have to have this. So if anyone hasn't prayed to receive the Lord as their Savior and receive Him as life into us, then if we need to start here. We need to start here. This is the base of what He's doing. I don't have that much time. The second part is um, involves all these um, aspects except for the last one. And um, this part has to deal with our soul. Right. Regeneration takes place in an instant. 
just like that. Um, our, what God is doing to um, get into our soul um, takes a lifetime. And so this is what we're practic practicing today. Um, this is what we're trying to get into all these matters. We're trying to learn how to pray. We're trying to learn how to read the Bible in a way that we touch spirit and life. Um, we're, we're, we want to help you in, this, in these ways because we realize that for you to be um, saved isn't just outward behavior correcting. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to correct your outward behavior. I'm here to um, help God <laughs> um, save you from inside out. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, we need, <laughs> we need um, all these steps that are mentioned here. Um, I think you, you guys can share more on this. The last part is glorification, which, um, in which this body of the sin, body of death, um, will be um, glorified is the best way. And um, from that time on, we'll be fully saved in his life. Yeah. So this is how God gets what he wants. He wants to get into us. He wants to express himself through us. To represent himself through us and um, this is the way he does it first judicially he redeems us and then second organically by life his life spreading in our being until we're fully saturated with his life he saves us to the uttermost so um, this is a brief opening and I hope everyone has something to share from this week I'm really looking forward to all of y'all sharing